let's go. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of let's other detectives. Let's go. Let's board, board the train. train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. Moi. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join oh, with the party they boys. Cute? I just They're hope so this doesn't cute. turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people Moi? can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Oh, the board! Oh my God, so good. Now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Here's Lee, our cast of characters. I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever, and Charlena Purcell. I, I love that she's just got her laptop out. She's like on, <laughs> on Twitter while Lori's trying to do her dramatic speech. Stuff you know about the old west? You are just awesome. Only the most famous police Only the, the most famous. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend, Natalie. No, I'm Nancy. Lori Gerard, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you, did, oh, why did you not recognize you're me? Wondering where we're going. The scene where Nancy's well, supposed to be in is clearly just Lord empty. Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because see, one day in 1903, his train this train was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board. The sound effects in this section make it so awkward, just like the really loud creaking of the chairs. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine <gasps> in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <gasps> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? Oh my hey, god. What's going on? Hey. <laughs> People should never go tampering with What an opening to a mystery. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to pen. I'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah, he'll get to the bottom, all right. Well, Nancy, what an ass. Social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your host is Spanish? Is Nancy is not up on the social etiquette stuff. This is the girl who asks concerned, people about their Lori dead Gerard family members. Ask them invasive questions. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. Yeah, and I'm proud of it, bitch. Oh, hey, Laurie. Does Chloe have the night off? So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us <laughs> minor celebrities. Yeah, I'm a major what celebrity. Your name I've got a million followers on Instagram. Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You don't remember me, do you? No. <laughs> at least she's honest. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame her. Obviously, like, Nancy's face is so intangible that no one can recognize her. Like, I, that's basically canon at this point. She can't be captured by, like, any type of camera or any type of technology. People forget her face. It's like she was cursed by an evil fairy. Oh, actually, thinking about it, Charlena never actually met Nancy, so <laughs> that wouldn't hold up in this case. Look at the volume of that ponytail, ma'am. Nothing in her outfit matches. Like, she's got yellow ponytail holder, pearl necklace. She's like, I know you're talking about me. Anyway, as I was saying, pearl necklace, weird flower corsage, orange brown sweater, uh, rancid meat skirt. Like, it just does it doesn't work, Charlena, honey. Yep, that's right. I said it! I said it! The <laughs> look she gave me. You know, there's a reason she's an author and not a fashionista. Where have you hey, two Joe, been? Hey, Joe, my best boy. I followed boy. Tino Balducci, and I went after John Gray. 
He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. What was he doing in there? Yeah. Any idea what he was doing? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Case closed. Now let's just enjoy this relaxing train journey. Did you see what it was? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. That's a really good impersonation. you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? ATAC! No, Everyone's ATAC? favorite criminal American fighting organization. We do a lot of American teens against crime. It's the best Joe, anagram. Not anagram. What Charlie acronym. Have to say? She the best Lori acronym is this ever invented. Thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What uh, do you think? I agree with Joe, always. I kind of agree with you. You've got to be kidding. Yeah, I said it, Frank. That's right. I don't have a secret crush on you, so just give up. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether hmm. Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Gotcha, Wait, gotcha. Catch you later. Hello, Mr. Engineer. Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Laurie Gerard has disappeared. So? <laughs> he does not care. He's like, good. Maybe she fell off the train. You know, serves her right. I just thought you might want to call the police or something. Hey, oh, I the know train I police. Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Forge nonstop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. He's like, I just want to go home and see my family. <laughs> Lori's not gonna stop me. I don't care if she's dead. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Well, yeah, someone uh, chucked her off. Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even yeah, she neither are you, than buddy. Jump off a moving train. But now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. I, I, well, like, one way they could improve this game is to let Nancy drive the train. That would a be good. That would be fun. Duck. Steam valve, huh? This'll show the engineer. We'll smoke uh -oh, him out. That doesn't look good. Serves you right for dismissing me, Nancy Drew. Oops. I'm gonna kill us all just for that bit of disrespect! Got my weapon at the ready. The pen is mightier than the sword. Charlene Purcell would Sadie agree. Sadie Crawford. Sadie Crawford! We've got our first doll. What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. I... I doubt there are any, like, electrical sockets on this train. And, like, this is a 2005 laptop. How good could the battery life be? Like, she'll be writing for half an hour and then she'll have to give it up. She'll maybe have to write with a pen and paper the old-fashioned way. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Voulet, who died about a year after they were married. How romantic. When did he buy this train? Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom built. So I want a custom and built some years train. Later, his wife could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. He's not a miner, Nancy. He's 35. Where did he meet Camille? I don't know that. The circumstances surrounding her passing are a bit of a mystery, too. Mystery? All like the, all the sure hairs on Nancy's neck death, just stood up. up in with a you don't say! A mystery! Stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, 
which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. Ooh. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is, well, it's a gift. I'll touch base I with you I want to have later. a knack with My publisher research. thanks you. <laughs> You're welcome, Charlena Purcell's publisher. This is another missed opportunity. This must have been the sleeping car. Like, we can't go into any of the sleeping car compartments. I think that would be a good opportunity for some sleuthing that we don't get to do. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> Uh, guessing could take me a while. Well, if you were a rocket scientist, you could probably figure it out, Nancy. Ooh, a tale of two dolls! Ill-tempered Edna could not get her way. She couldn't get Alice to come out and play. I can't, I'm too tired, is what Alice said. I just want to go straight back to bed. Edna angrily tried to make herself heard but all that came out was one two-part word i just wrote down ill-tempered edna and her name is actually edna the terrible why i'm not your mother yawning alice replied till edna the terrible finally gave up and cried what a sad story to hang on your wall another missed opportunity in this game is that there are not enough spooky circumstances like this is supposed to be a haunted train i feel like they don't make the most of that like they could have done so much more like i think there's only like one haunting in this game and it's fairly brief which is so disappointing i think can you imagine buying terrible edna as your child's present child's present the questions everyone would ask it's like, what's your doll's name, sweetie? Oh, this is Edna the Terrible. Oh! <laughs> or did Camille name them that, is the question. I feel like a lot of the dolls have kind of unsavory names. Like, I think that goes to show something about Camille's personality. Maybe she just didn't really like dolls. But Jake kept buying her these hecking dolls, and she's like, I don't want them! Like, stop giving me dolls, Jake! Like, maybe at the start she humored him, and then at a certain point she's like, I'm telling you, I don't want these dolls! Okay, this is Edna the Terrible. This is, this is naughty Tina. I'm gonna throw her on the floor to show you how much I don't want a doll. There we go. I love when a jolly little tune plays when you do something Left right. Left pickaxe and lamp with fuel for safekeeping. To open what's closed, Lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? Agreed about the haunting needs more ghosts. I mean, to be fair, you could say that about every piece of media. Needs more ghosts. Certainly most Nancy games could be improved by adding more ghosts. I think. Maybe Jake couldn't take a hit. Yeah. He was like, oh, Camille loves dolls. That's why she named this one Edna the Terrible, right? Hey, come on over here. No. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. I don't appreciate people ordering me around, John. You look pretty busy. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Oh, both these answers are great! A ghost kidnapping? Or like, what's the logistics of a train that moves being haunted? No, I need to know if the ghost kidnapped Lori. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts they are actually temporary her away? distortions and local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. Wow, it's incredible how this man can make something as cool as ghosts sound boring. That's a little hard to swallow. It's all very scientific. 
But the fact is, Lori's missing. No, I'm not. I'm right here. I'm right here, John. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Oh, picking up on some bad vibes over here. I love what Nancy's mean. I just love it. I feel like she's not as mean in the newer games. And I'm sad about that. Bring back mean Nancy. Charlene Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlene Purcell writes romance novels end of comment okay buster you're the one who spends his whole life chasing after things that might not even exist <sighs> that was very judgmental of him i bet charlena purcell makes more money than him he's just jealous is Lori a friend of yours first time i met her was when i boarded this train with all the rest of you i knew her by reputation of course my like fabulous else reputation who reads the tabloids it doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Oh my god, Nancy! Mean Nancy! Gotta go, like, full mean Nancy. I'm committed to being nasty Nancy. Maybe she doesn't have Negative any friends. Negative Nancy. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. Uh, well, I can buy Take friends. Care. Sorry. Um, everyone loves to be my friend when I buy them Gucci bags, okay? When I take them to Disney World. This looks like some sort of game. This looks like some sort of game. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the game. Like, no cap. I love it. No, I didn't press it in time. I was grooving too hard. I love this rendition of Camp Town Races. No! I bowed. No, my status as a pro gamer is in shambles. The floppy bird of Nancy Drew minigames. The, oh, the flappy bird. But it's better than flappy bird because it's about horses and wipe it's got out. a really good soundtrack. Wipe out! I wiped out! This is so embarrassing. I couldn't make it past the literal first hurdle. Where do I buy one of these doodads in real life? I feel like I'd spend a lot less time on social media if I had one of these in my house. I did it! I did it! <laughs> Maybe I'm here. a pro gamer after all. Sickly Sarah, yeah. One of her pretty green eyes turned blue. I think literally all of the names so far have been negative, except for Sadie Crawford, which is neutral. It's like, oh, this doll's got a deadly illness. I think it's terminal. <laughs> I don't think she's gonna survive, Jake. Maybe you should just bring her back. <laughs> bring her back to the store. He needs to clean up his mess. Like, you live like this, bitch. You live like this. Clean up your mess. Clean up your packing peanuts, sir. Oh god, the first slug. The little book of samplers. Example of a spot sampler. It behooves these women to remember that nothing catches the eye like variety, nor holds the heart like a multi-talented seamstress. Yeah, um, for all of you female-identifying people in the chat right now, uh, having trouble in love, not lucky in love, just learn to be a ver varied seamstress, and then, like, love will come to you at, like that. You'll have so many, like, men, women, non-binary people clawing at your door when they learn that you're a multi-talented seamstress. Eagle for America, duck for marital fidelity. <laughs> what do you send for marital infidelity? Like a dead duck? <laughs> I imagine that's the way you you break up <laughs> with your with your partner like honey i sewed this sampler it's a dead duck to represent that i want a divorce i could play a tune i could play a tune beep, beep, beep. don't do that please those microphones i set up over there are very sensitive just about took out my ear well why don't you turn those microphones off you can play while i play my done. tune I'll let you know when that is, all right? 
Okay. No, I want to make his ears bleed. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Nancy's like standing there like... Mm. Please don't. <laughs> and he's like... I see you! I see you! <laughs> don't even try please it! Please don't. Nancy? Please don't. Don't even think about it. And this it. is a section of the stream I please call... Don't. Annoying John no, no, Gray. No. <laughs> no, no, no! I wish the piano was a second chance so bad. John just throws her out the train. Yeah, he just like lifts her bodily out the window. <laughs> Guess there's another ghost haunting this train now! <laughs> Look, there's awful Ursula. I wish I was good at sewing so I could recreate this. This would be an epic piece of Nancy Drew mer merchandise. I think I relate the most to Awful Ursula I'm out of all the dolls. I feel like sometimes when I'm grumpy, I have Awful Ursula energy. I also just love how this is a train sampler, although I think they've got an issue as like two of the cars have come off the tracks. wonder what a chair symbolizes. Was that in the book? I'm gonna guess that a chair symbolizes stability. Domesticity. I'm kind of close, I guess. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, I'm wearing the Chanel vest, true. darling. <laughs> I care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for Well, uh, famous is stretching it. B-listers at most. Calm More down. like C-listers. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. Except for Laura Gerard, Sorry. of course. You know, I'm the most actually, famous woman in the world. Cool. Nice try, Beth. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. <laughs> nice try, Beth. I What's love Bess and George in this game, especially that interaction. Adobe beige. That being said, catch you later. <laughs> no, they're like, please, Nancy, give us an update. And Nancy, like, I'm sorry, I've got bigger fish to fry. I've got more important things to do, like annoy John Gray. Nancy, right? No, Nancy, raw. <laughs> You've got a better memory than our hostess. Sassy Nancy, <laughs> bring out the sassy Amateur detective. detective huh? No! About becoming a <laughs> He's flaming detective? me for choosing you know, junior like detective. Me? Bitch, I've solved more cases than you. Well, I don't know. Do you like what you do? I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? No, I didn't. I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction. Tell me about them. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. He's putting his whole Tino Balcucci into lying. That is a falsity. I heard all they had was a plastic knife from a carry-out chicken place. I heard all they had was a plastic knife from a carry-out chicken place. You heard wrong. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining the car. The walls have ears, yeah, Tino. At, uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. You know, I would respect Tino a lot more if he was just going around picking up, like, banana slugs off the floor. He's like, oh, my little, my buddy, I've got a new friend, a, a detective partner. You know, every Sherlock needs a Watson, and this slug is mine. <laughs> but it's not that type of slug. Do you think it had anything to do with Laurie's disappearance? Nah. Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. You know what else is worthless, Tino? Your opinion. <laughs> Nancy Sassy Drew. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wow, right he's so kind. He's so that generous. Way, when people ask you where you so got benevolent. It, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. The Tino Balducci. Yeah, I'm not going to tell them that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What else can I do for you? <laughs> The way she says that. Honestly, if I had never played this game, I wouldn't know what that other type of slug was. Like, I don't- I still don't really know what they are. Like, all I know about the metal slug is that it's like a round 
disc with a number on it, like a Nancy Drew Last Train of Blue Moon Canyon. That's my only point of reference for that kind of slug. So I don't know how accurate that is. So what do you think happened to Lori? Well, she could have been kidnapped. She could have been tossed off the train. She could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. When, when do you think that'll be? You're you're gathering the facts? That's what you're doing here, Tino? Looks to me like you're just reading a book. Reading the dictionary, huh? Trying to finally learn the English language? Sorry. When do you think I can't that will help be? It. I'll know the facts. I just love when being mean facts. to Tino. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a misogynist. You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I talk said as to much a during woman? an interview on national me? TV, why once, would I do it's a that? Pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Oh, uh, I love Charlena. Like, a flaming Tino on national TV. I gotta respect that. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I talked to him would be to arrest him for <laughs> fraud. <laughs> it's been great talking to you. Not a problem. And by great, I mean awful. I mean bad. <laughs> Let's study him from afar. What is he... It does look like he might be reading. Is that a book in his hand? What is... Oh, no, it's his notebook. He's just staring at a little, like, picture of a mouse that he drew. <laughs> yeah. Or no, it's like, I bet it's like a little picture of a train. And just, like, a question mark. Like, hmm. Maybe a little, like, stick figure of Lori. Being like, hmm. Where, where Lori? Oh! Camille with Hagar Anderson and Chantilly Hilgeret. She really looks like she's been forced to, to pose with these dolls. Like, Jake is like off camera being like, Darling, I'll buy you that train if you just get a picture with these new dolls I bought for you, darling. Eliza Sandberger. See, Jake bought it. Not Camille. I think that tells you a lot. Okay. Woohoo! That square and that duck look very familiar. Okay. Yes, the duck means marital fidelity. I remember that. Naughty Tina. Again, a, a, ne a negative name. I don't think any of these have been positive names. We've got Edna the Terrible, Yawning Alice, Sickly Sarah, Awful Ursula, and Naughty Tina. Yeah, no way. Camille burst into tears at the sight that the doll was actually still intact, but even more terrifying. Looks like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. There's Citrine, tears. amethyst, zircon, those are all gemstones, I think. I think, says Nancy, as if she had not just perused the gemstone book. Ooh! What a fabulous contraption! If I had a lamp, this is where I'd put it. <laughs> if I had a lamp, this is exactly where I'd put it. This is one where the first time I played this, I didn't realize what kind of puzzle it was, so I got stuck for a while. Because I don't think they give you a good indication of what kind of puzzle this is, that it's just like a Simon puzzle. They don't tell you that, which I think is a little unfair. And for someone who's never played a Nancy game before as well, it would be, like, really difficult to figure out. Because these are kind of, like, staple puzzles of the Nancy games. But, again, like I say, if you've never played a Nancy game, you'd be a bit at a loss. I mean, you, you would also be at a loss for never having played a Nancy game. I would, I would pity those who've never played a Nancy game. But they'd also be at a loss because they wouldn't be able to figure out how to do this puzzle. Yes! Okay, what's through the door? Are, is this the caboose? Lori? Oh my gosh! My gosh! I never thought you'd be the one to find me. No offense. Uh, 
Nadine, Nadine Crew. Nancy, Nancy Drew. Well, that girl I didn't want to invite. Holy shit. By ghosts or anything? That bookshelf in the dining car? You step on this thing in the floor in there and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. I wish Nancy could actually go through that secret door. That would be so fun. Was anyone else in on the trick? Just the engineer, and all he did was keep his mouth shut. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They've been what storing luck. it in this old warehouse Why can't I be that lucky? for so long that everybody had just forgotten just about it. end up accidentally buying and a train. After, like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally... Here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Ah, uh, living the Everything dream. Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Oh, to be because the only living me. relative See, of a letter, guy who Jake owns tells a Ruth train. That everything she needs to figure like, out where my his goodness, is, I wish that was me. Train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which mm. kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. She obviously didn't think of just hiring a bunch of famous detectives. Like, Lori's a genius in her way. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. The Harvey Whatever. Boys. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has Who finally wouldn't? found me, I can finally go meet him for real. Like, those are two of the best things, like haunted and train. Like, that's just like one of the best two-word phrases that exist in the English language. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. Oh, that's my favorite Charlene really, Purcell. Really like I really liked the sequel as well, novels. The Sun Tells Everybody No knows Truth. Me says I'd be really good at it. Really good sequel. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlene some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And she hated them. Time to kill Charlene, I think. How dare she disrespect the queen? Time to push her off the train. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. I love the way Lori thinks. Oh my god, imagine like a murder mystery party on a haunted train. Like, I, I literally can't think of anything better than that. Luck, Let me in. Naturally. I wonder how you open it. I think a brick would do it. Looks like a dance floor maybe i love that camille just had her own personal dance floor installed in her train dance was the only thing camille liked yeah she she danced to get out all her aggression when jake bought her a new doll she'd just be like i'm going to my dance floor and you better not disturb me and then like blasted chopin and like did her little steps hmm. i'm not feeling very good about this right now Oh, there. Oh, All done. <laughs> never mind. Never, never mind. All done. Okay, silver is orange, blue, green, red, purple, yellow. I went around entirely the worst way to do this, but it's fine. I love to make things harder for myself. Orange, blue, green, red, purple. Yellow. Ta-da! Now I can get all the cigars! Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I better keep this. Hurley's Whirly Burly. 
the coolest dance in 1870. Oh, yes, indeed. I bet Laurie's, if she saw this, she'd be like, that's going on my TikTok. I'm bringing back Hurley's Whirly Burly. And acetylene works. Dear Jake, I have sent you two lamps, which you should receive by the end of the month. I need to read that letter from the niece as well. When you get them, place carbide in the lower chamber, water in the upper chamber, then use the built-in flint lighter to ignite the jet of gas which results. As you'll see, the carbide lamp is an exceedingly practical device, especially for people in your dark and dangerous line of work. Would that you or I had invented it. I, in your last letter, you sounded quite despondent, old chum. Camille doesn't like the dolls I'm giving her. Or like, probably even, I have a feeling Camille doesn't like the dolls I'm giving her. You know, like, awful Ursula and naughty Tina. I suppose this is understandable in view of your failure to strike it rich. But I am living proof of how quickly misfortune can turn into good fortune. Little did I suspect five years ago that my attempt to produce aluminum would instead produce calcium carbide, or that calcium carbide, when placed in water, would release acetylene. Yet suddenly I was the surprised but happy owner of the patent for an inexpensive way of manufacturing an extremely flammable gas! Just as I became wealthy when I sold that patent, I have no doubt that you too will someday be handsomely your friend, Thomas Wilson. rewarded for your efforts. Continue to keep me apprised of your adventures, dear friend, and never ever give up. I mean, he probably wouldn't be in as dire financial straits if he didn't keep buying Camille dolls that she doesn't even want. May the lamps I sent you soon light your way to the gold you seek. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. And, like, Jake's her holding the letter, being like, I asked for a loan, not lamps! Crumples it up. Wait, I needed to read this the other letter. The of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death. I, I just want a distant to relative to leave me a There's train in their will. To is that too much that my to travels ask? have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, wow. Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. His name. To so it's his not. Name, it's not Camille. Someone else has a warm place in his heart, other than Camille. Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker, and wearing the shoes oh as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you. Words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her. <laughs> like, Camille, her. tell me you'll never leave. Tell me you'll today. never leave, Camille. Promise me. So Sorry, I'm else, like making things up about Jake Hurley, but it's train. it's it's like a it runaway train. Things. It's just like Please going now. It's Jake it's heading Hurley. along the tracks. I can't stop it. My head can't. And that Jake Hurley is just trying to win his reluctant wife's love with with dolls that she doesn't want. We've got a lot to do. Let's go do the locations puzzle first. I think so. To Calico. Calico. Oh. That noise scared me. Um. Calico. Calico. Perfect. I really like this puzzle as well, actually. There's a lot of good puzzles in this game. 
everything that is not the scale puzzle, pretty much, is a good puzzle. <laughs> Wait, sil, sil, no! Sil, silver, ado. In Central City. Central City. And then Dodge City. Dodge City. Virginia City. Oh, crumbs. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Virginia City. There we go. And Tombstone. Imagine calling a town Tombstone. Um, it's not really, it doesn't really bode well. <laughs> like, why, why did you call the town Tombstone? So many people died here. Never zit Bob. Okay, let me write that Guess down. Yes, I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. Isn't that what will be less left of us all when we're dead, Nancy? Just a jumble of letters. I haven't looked at my task list yet so far this stream. I'm I'm like a, maybe even a senior detective. You know, I'm I'm more like a middle-aged detective. You know, somewhere between junior and senior. Okay, so maybe we can look at the dance shoes and Nancy will be like, oh. The name of the shoes yeah. is so faded, I can't tell there what it is. There we go. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. See, this is what happens when you just obsessively play all the Nancy Drew games. <laughs> you don't even need to use the task list anymore. Send that. <laughs> Imagine just sending it to Bess, like, no explanation. Hey, Bess. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see this? Picture has been sent. Uh, no explanation required. I always forget that you can take pictures of things in this game. View okay. pictures. What a good picture. Paparazzi shot. Nancy could sell this to TMZ for like a thousand dollars. Hey, Bess, Bess, here's a picture I took of Laurie Gerard without her consent. Isn't it great? Look at her reading. I can see the tabloid headline now. Laurie Gerard reads? Question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation point. Who else can I take non-consensual pictures of? I wish you could take pictures when you're closer to them or, like, zoom in so I can get, like, right in their faces. Hey, Tino! Hey, Tino! What do you think of the claims that you're a lying liar, Tino? No, I'm not gonna send that to anyone. I don't want a picture of Tino on my phone, actually. <laughs> I don't want that. Maybe we should call Bess and George, actually. And be like, hey. <laughs> have you found that information out for me yet? I know they sent you the picture like two minutes ago, but. Hello? Have you found Hi, it out yet? Hey, what's going on? Oh, I probably sent it to them before. Before they needed it, honestly. I just jumped the gun on that one. The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Don't ask! <laughs> but this is essential. Oh, I'm way, I'm way ahead of you, George. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the wall. Anyway... Send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. Yeah, I know I know you have a foot fetish, Bess. I thought you'd enjoy it, but it worked out really well. I get the definite feeling Lori Gerard has a thing for Tino Me? Balducci. Never. I saw him on TV once. He is very cute. Lori thinks he's Bess! the greatest detective. No! I think I'm the world's greatest detective. Let's just say I'm glad he doesn't work for our police department. I think the only reason he's famous is because he looks good on camera. Does he? Well, if he looks smart, good on camera, I'd hate to see someone who looks bad on camera. Smart. In fact, maybe Balducci tries to look incompetent on purpose. You know, to give the bad guys a false sense of security. Bess, so this is some embarrassing 40 chess you're playing. No, Bess, I never did. Well, there you go. 
Camille sounds. That's what this game is missing. That would be so good. Why can't we do that? Her interactive should know because they already had one um, in one of their games that a seance just makes any game better. They can be a puzzle repeater. They can be a, like a Nancy Drew game trope repeater. Like there's no shame in that. Okay, let's talk to our favorite boys. Ghosts make any game better. And if you've got a seance as well as ghosts, like a seance to contact those ghosts, that just makes your game A+. Plus. Like, it adds the plus onto the A score. What's <gasps> with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed yep. up in the caboose. You bet I did. And as a reward for finding her, World's she let me have greatest this. detective. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mind. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Joe, Joe will always pouting. need you. Want any help? Don't say are you that. Kidding? <laughs> you bet I do. Now you're talking. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it, you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her. Show her what? That old picture we found. <gasps> uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. Buell's. See? Buell's supplies and pawn shop. That's got to be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, Can't be just a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Frank, I love your well, optimism. that's where we're headed. So let's just hope for the best. Right. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. It would be nice to know his name. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. You don't Good know idea, Charlena Purcell, Frank? My Talk goodness, he's a, so uncultured. Let's call Bess and Georgian and see if they've got that name of the dance shoe company. But first, let's take an invasive picture of Frank and Joe. <laughs> Save that one. Send that to Bess. She'll get a kick out of it. Wait, I think they're about to look up. Can I get one where they're looking up? Hello, boys. Pose for the picture. Say cheese, hearties. I wish Bess would acknowledge all these great pictures I'm sending her. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. Oh. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chatoyant. Mm. C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-T-E-S. C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateaillant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting they us know. They were the Gucci of the day. I'll talk to you guys later. Let us know what happens. Oh my god, look at these great train pictures. I want those train pictures. I want train pictures for my wall at home. Great picture of the boys. Especially love this one. The train going through the snow. Hey, Bess! Here's a home decor idea. Uh, maybe we should talk to Charlene. We haven't chatted with her in a yes. while. Get the latest goss. Lori. She's in the caboose. Oh, you right! right. She yeah, we found Lori. She wanted to see which of us would Just find Just casually her first. found and Lori. You? The others on the train. John Gray and that police detective. Do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. Charlena tells it like it is. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? Oh, getting? she thinks he no. deserves attention, you but she thinks he deserves negative attention. We do! Is that all, dear? <laughs> we do! We're really good detectives, actually. Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> doesn't everyone? No, Tino Balducci certainly doesn't. Do you think she could do it? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? <gasps> Charlena just would so much rather be at home right now. The characters in this game are all so colorful. They're so fun. How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. 
And because my work <coughs> is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what She's I can do. She's got Wi-Fi on this great. train? Thank you. Oh my gosh. Whoever invented the cellular modem. Ooh, That's the cellular awesome. modem. <laughs> Thank you, inventor of the cellular I modem. Get going. Hold on, wait. That would be nice. I need to I need to look this up actually. I need to know who invented the cellular modem. This is an educational moment, a learning opportunity. There's no like solid answer, but it says that someone named Vanitha Kumar did some work on modems. So thank you, Vanitha Kumar. Laura said Whoa! Oh my god! Somebody must have thrown the emergency <gasps> The break. emergency brake! The question is, did somebody throw the brake? Or something. Joe's oh, asking Joe, the important you questions. Sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene, and I saw no one. Saw no one, but that doesn't mean no one was there. Camille's ghost. She's getting her revenge because she knows we're getting closer to the dolls. Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came mm. bursting through one door, while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy. Wait, you there. saw the mysterious he said the train engineer? could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. I love Everybody how the engineer doesn't get a name just because he's not a celebrity time. like everyone else on this train. There's no way Lori could have thrown the brake unless she had someone else. Why? Wait, why? The question is, why, why couldn't Lori what have she done or it? Anybody else stand to gain I'm by stopping the train? Strong. Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at Joe work Joe makes a good God, point. Joe. I guess we should talk to Tino and see if he found any evidence, any clues. Well, it's the little lady detective. What oh, do you he's mean? belittling me. Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. God oh, gave yeah? me strength to not murder this man with my pen. She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Thank God. I can't get over that this is like their idea of like the most handsome man. Like it's, oh, he's the world's most handsome police detective. It's like this man? This man? I feel so uncomfortable looking at his, like, little creep of chest hair fuzz coming out there. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot of stairs, but nice girl. She has, like, even more upstairs than you have downstairs, my man. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah. Those piercing were, eyes. I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. <laughs> oh, Tino, your eyes are so brown. <laughs> yeah, poor Laurie. She definitely deserves better. Like, he's just so insecure that he can't even admit that a woman is smarter than him. He always has to be, like, the smartest man in the room, completely ignoring the fact that he's usually the dumbest person in the room. What did you find? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. Oh, yeah. My, my clue goes to another school. You wouldn't know it. Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones over there. <laughs> I told the geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. Just let Nancy drive the train. It's always been my dream. Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? Of course. As a matter of fact, I found this. Probably fell out of the perp's pocket Ooh. and was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus Someone's show Someone's trying to cook a turkey. You think John Gray threw the break? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about acts in his show, that's why. I checked with this buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon. Or he's toast. 
and you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can you? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make Your marital rest. fidelity in a row? Is he gonna propose to John Gray? But couldn't someone else have dropped that thermometer? Please. Who's the top cop here, huh? Who's the world famous detective? You? Actually, yeah. You know what I'm doing, sweetheart. John Gray wanted publicity. That's, that's it. That's exactly what I'm gonna that's, give. That's, that's, that's it! <laughs> Sweetheart, I'll show you, sweetheart, when I cleave your skull in two with that axe. Do you think I could I'll take sweet, a closer see look how at that sweet your statue? heart is when what, I tear it out of your chest? Go ahead, take a look. Oh, I, I'm gonna clip something with that, and it's not gonna be your cigar, Tino. I need this stone to build that thing in the diagram I found, but if I remove it now, Tino will know I'm onto something. Interesting. I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What else can I do for you? It's been great talking to you. John has more self-worth than Tino. This is true, this is true. He's a bit more down-to-earth as well. Well, I say- Well, you know what? I say that, I was gonna say, but he believes in ghosts, but I feel like believing in ghosts is more based in reality than Tino thinking he's the world's greatest detective, you know? Okay, speaking of John Gray, I feel like we haven't talked to him in a while. Let's go have a chat. Sup? Sup? <laughs> oh, I just found Lori, you know, no biggie. I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose, so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even My vibes is, are I'm never wrong. So maybe they're not about Lori. That's like low-key the quote me. of the game. Uh, top underrated quote of the game, at least. <laughs> My vibes are never wrong. <laughs> are you a scientist or a psychic? I'm confused. Are you a scientist or a psychic? I happen to be both. What's commonly referred to as psychic phenomena is all a matter of energy. Just because we don't know where that energy is generated or how to measure it yet doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. No offense, but I don't- No, actually you. full offense. Don't say full I didn't offense. warn you. So are you making any progress in here? Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You've got something? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't. Babe, but that's just like an Instagram line, light leak filter. Where? Mm. You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. Okay. Poor Camille. You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to that's ghosts That's not a very nice way to refer to a woman's body that as blob a blob. Is a of... Were you in this room the whole time prior to that emergency break thing? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car. See, this is why I wish we could go to the sleeping an car and look around the, the compartment. We could there? find some great no. evidence in there. Some really good clues. Some delicious, chunky clues. I'll let you get back to work. Come but back no. Anytime. Okay. Hmm. Well, I don't feel like we learned a lot from him. Just gonna take that. You're not using that, are you, sir? Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully along. Jake the looks like a as goat. A dancing He's like the human he embodiment he the sight of a very goat. Comforting. And I mean I that in a derogatory more way. Would have found it terrifying. Poor Camille. But she hates dolls. Yeah, two things you need to know about Camille. She loved dancing, hated dolls. 